and we invited businesses from across County Loud, across a diverse range of services and products, and it was very interactive. We had a great uh, calibre of speakers there, and we learned such an amount of them, and we're lucky to have um, one or two of them again today. So, this is a picture of the Monty crew. There were 18 participants, and um, we had manufacturing, finance, right down to well-being, services, education, and hospitality. The one common thing was that they wanted to reach their audience. They wanted to offer a service or a product that was customised and reached and resonated with their with their um, target markets. So, what part of what we did was we went through what's called a business canvas model, which is a really good thing and it's it's a great exercise for businesses to do on a regular basis. And this would change as you change your services, as you change your products. So we looked at things like key partners, what are your key activities, what resources do you need to make sure you get your business, your, your product out to market, what are your value propositions, and your value proposition is what do you offer each type of client, each type of customer, what do you give them, do you give them a, a value for money, do you give them something that um, offers longevity and um, like brilliant fencing, I don't have to paint that again, this is also a good thing in my life. Um, what, what type of customer, what, what did each one want? So every the, the reason you go to the, the car dealership that you go to is because there is a value proposition. It offers you something like peace of mind, service, warranty, whatever it is. Your customer relation, how do I manage that? How do I maintain that? The channels, how do I reach them? Is it franchising? Is it face-to-face? -face? Is it transactional? Is it online? What is it? And the type of customers, your cost structure, how do I get to, what, what elements do I have to consider before I uh, have a, a recommended retail price? And my revenue streams, very important for every business here, how do I make money? So I'd like to invite two of my willing participants, Damien Keenan and Megan Hughes, up onto the stage. Damien is uh, part of Elite Defence, which is uh, based in Castellanum, so I'd like to come on stage to us and then it's part of the business development team in Dundalk Credit Union, and both were active partners for us um, throughout the, the boot camp. So guys, if you'd like to see this, it's, it's like, um, who do I feel like? Uh, Miriam? Miriam, I feel like I'm about to interview them now. Focus on gig growth, Miriam. Um, so Damien, we're going to start with Damien first. So, Damien, do you want to tell us a little bit about um, Elise, just so that you know? Um. Elite Defence is um, part of a company called Elite Form, and we've been based in um, Castlebanion for started 45 years ago actually, and um, they started making gutters. Okay. Simple as that. So the product developed from the actual material they had, they, they were using it with, with steel. So products kind of went on, developed into farm buildings, the covers for farm buildings. Uh, so the, the natural progression just kept on going, and um, the, their last one of the last big jobs was uh, in Ireland. We done the Cora uh, news stand, and in UK we uh, supplied all the internal panels on the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, which has 20, 23,000 odd pounds on that. So, and that actually, that job was, was strangely enough, was, was, uh, was a job that when they voted for first, they didn't get. And then the, the actual company that got the job couldn't fulfill it. So we got approached again, and that's, that was probably even uh, kind of like a better feeling to actually get the second time around and uh, the reputation that you get from that alone. Um, I'm actually only with the company for four months. Okay. So, uh, and I've passed the company probably every day of my life going to my other work uh, and I never thought I probably would end up there. I've got, I must admit, uh, it's a great uh, family feeling in the company and uh, they give you every opportunity to to succeed. Can you tell us a little bit then, Damien, as part of the boot camp, can, can you tell me what kind of learning that you, you, you drew from the day? Well, I suppose from the day, uh, we all kind of 
people are aware of social media. Uh, didn't really know how to use it. I really wasn't that engaged with it myself. Um, I learned, I suppose, that one of the biggest things that we learned from it uh, was that a couple of things. Older people don't feel old. Uh, and that was the main thing. And I, they were talking originally, as you said, that the 65 plus, but it's really from the 50 age group up. That's what you're selling to. And um, age, age, as you get older, age is just a number. <laughs> it's all it is. So, um, online, offline. Online experience, uh, you have to engage with it. Uh, but not, not with not without leaving the offline experience, I think, too. I think that's, uh, yeah. people like, they will, they like, they will maybe look at your product online, but they really want to go and see you there as well. Um, I suppose one of the major things was, a uh, thing that came up on, on, at the boot camp was the dignity test. Uh, when we're doing advertising, when we're doing leaflets, when we're engaging with people that we have to, uh, Treat them with dignity, but we don't presume that uh, they don't know. I think that's the big thing that or they can't do. Uh, so that's one thing that, that was one of the biggest things we learned. Um, also with social media, it's not really it's not really for self. It's for making them aware and creating a desire. That was that was the, the other things. Um, in, in, from the book camp too, we had, I suppose, our new product, which is the Cavalli Smart Fence, is it's a product that is designed to replace the old wood panels that are rotten. And we didn't want to be, this product was going to be sold in the retail market. So this was new for us because we were always dealing direct with the customer. But this now we're going to sell this to the likes of the, the, the DIY chains landscaping companies and so this was kind of a new kind of venture for us and we had to develop we realized that we had actually multiple of, of customers we had our the end user people who actually buy defense we had people who were selling it for us which was the trade and so we had to develop uh, our thinking around that so now we're advertising to the retailer and that's a completely different uh, way of doing it than actually advertising to the, the end user. And then Lavina went out to you, David. Lavina, uh, uh, she went out and we met up on a couple of occasions and we went through the commercialisation plan. And it was really when you communicate and talk to people that you actually see uh, things that you miss. And you say, all oh, right, we can do that, we can do this. And uh, it gradually grew and grew, and every, every meeting we got more out of it. Um, and we have definitely uh, implement, implemented it. Uh, I suppose I'm just checking on my phone, just before I come up, and just checking. With Facebook, in the last uh, 28 days, we've had over 24,800 uh, reaches in Facebook. That advertising, with true advertising, it's not just all sold through advertising, but we've spent in the region of 80 euros to get that. And okay, it's awareness. Uh, and also, where a product really was developed in December of last year, won awards in February, we then decided to bring it. It, it was decided then to bring it to market, and we've actually have to date we have it in in Cork and in Dublin, in Loud, and also as of yesterday we should have it in Sligo and Limerick, and possibly a four or eight locations. And when we're dealing with trade, it, it's it's the multiplier factor that we that was probably caught us not unaware, but we just really didn't think this was going to happen like this. That uh, when we're dealing with the trade, we're dealing with people that have shops or access to shops of maybe 150 shops. In one meeting, you're talking to someone that possibly could get you into 150 shops. 
maybe the other ones are even more than that. So it makes us also aware that the, the plant itself is, is uh, on a site, uh, it's a 20 odd thousand size uh, plant, uh, but the site is actually big, big enough to expand, and we are expanding uh, as we speak. That's great. Well, thank you very much, and thanks very much for your participation today as well. I would like to ask, um, Megan is going to do a very short uh, PowerPoint. I work with Megan then afterwards. Uh, Megan is part of the business development team in uh, Good Luck Ready. And Good Luck Ready is also uh, working with Mary as a age friendly champion. And so I'll just give a bit of background on the Royal Credit Union. First of all, for anyone who might know about Credit Union, um, we're located just around the corner on Market Street. Um, today we're actually one of the largest and strongest credit unions in the country. We have over 30,000 members currently and it's a really vibrant um, community within the credit union with over 52 different nationalities. So we were delighted to take part in the boot camp. One of the, the goals of the Door Credit Union is to provide a positive member experience and to have a positive impact on the local community. So we wanted to improve the member experience as much as possible and we were very interested um, to find out what we could about the over 50s market. So Geraldine um, mentored me throughout the boot camp. Um, we went back to the credit union and we worked with the team in the North Credit Union to look at the data that we already had. So you'll see here it's quite interesting. We looked at the membership overall, um, looking at it by age, and you'll see the second largest category is the 51 to 60 age group. We then wanted to look at these members to see how they were as members, if they were active, if they were active borrowers within the credit union. So you'll see here, looking at the current loan types by age, that the 51 to 60 age group is actually the group that has the largest amount of spending within the credit union. We then follow that on, looking, or using data that we had um, collected through focus groups that we had done earlier in the year, which showed us different channels of communication that this age group of men would prefer to be contacted through. So you'll see the 50 to 60 age group prefer to be contacted by email or through updates on social media. The 65 to 80 age group prefer face-to-face -face interaction or letter in post. So while a lot of other financial institutions are actually reducing the amount of face-to-face -face interaction that they have with their customers, in the last few years we have actually introduced two new member service centres offering eight new places where our members can have face-to-face -face interaction with a member of our team. So due to these findings, what we have done is we, have, we are starting to tailor our campaigns to suit the needs and the wants of this age group. We're reviewing the communication channels as well, so we're, we're targeting it with whatever preferred um, method of communication these members would have. Another key point um, that we took away from the bootcamp was that communication with other local businesses that are focusing in this area was a really great learning. Recently we have collaborated with Spec Service and Vogue and Oriel Orthodontics to provide them with an information flyer on loan information that they can give to their customers because they both identified that a high percentage of their customers were within the over 50s age group and that, that there was also a financial requirement there for certain products and services that they were providing. And one of the key um, points that we also took away from Bootcamp was communication, listening to our members that are within this age bracket and allowing them to tell us about their wants and needs and which in turn allows us to respond to them. Right, thanks very much. So you, you'll see actually just as part of that, uh, what Sarah spoke about was the toolkit and how we access information. So you see that um, as part of boot camp, Megan went back and looked at her own data, so what, what they had amassed themselves. What, what um, Damien did was look at market research and bring the product to market. 
So it's about looking at the information you have or external sources and tailoring the product around. And I have to say, both very big champions of being resourceful and also being very relatable with their markets. Okay, so thank you very much. You're very, very good. Take a seat now, take a deep breath.